All right, guys. So for me, as you know, I use uh, two 320 watt drivers to build my photo boost systems, the 640 watt, the four x four, five x five, the big system. Uh, now, basically with these drivers at full blast, pretty much capable of uh, 1900 micromoles. So pretty insane there. But um, can be done with any of this is the point of this video. I'm just using my own purposes as an example. So that's what we're gonna be doing. This is a two 320 watt build, connecting them to one power cord and putting a power monitor or a watt meter in there to uh, monitor all. So to start, I got a uh, piece of plywood, painted it with some kills because it's gonna be going in the grow room. Um, in general, I just like to do that and not have any exposed wood. Also, white looks a little, little bit better than exposed wood. I also need to remember to do this upside down for you guys. So, uh, I was thinking about how do I always lay my drivers out in the room, and it essentially, uh, I always lay them out vertically, and the reason being is that um, drivers are thinned, and these, <clears throat> these ones aren't extremely thinned, uh, but nonetheless, they're thinned, and so they do the best at cooling if they're in a vertical position. So to do that, I put them vertical. Now, like I said, we have a watt meter. Um, that's all cool and dandy, but it looks ugly on its own. So I needed to have a nice little project box to put everything into. I then had to figure out where I'm going to, uh, or how I'm gonna lay everything out exactly to make it look good, fit, this or that, um, have the screen display properly all that good stuff. So this is pretty much what I came up with. Um, there's only a couple ways to skin the cat and I'm not trying to be extremely compact with this. This definitely could be done slightly more compact, um, but this is good enough. So that combined with all the cable glands, the screen put in will be quite nice. We'll have pa AC power coming in the sides, out the back, and then um, controls coming in here. You'll see in just a minute. And we'll be off to the races. So that was the first step. So what I figure out is where I'm going to mount my drivers, and that looks pretty good. We are relatively flush here, I'm level. Plus I have some pre marks, so we're level. Um, next thing I'm going to do is I like to elevate my drivers slightly. It's not a must. You can mount them straight on wood. They are actually rated to do so, but I prefer to elevate them because again, the same way, the same reason I mount them vertically to improve their cooling, I'm going to elevate them. And there's a couple ways to do this. I have a bunch of square tubing left around, so I'm going to use this. This is probably the expensive way around it and uh, not so many people like it. The other way to do it, simple washers. Stack of four of these little, uh, little washers are probably like nine cents each. This works great right under the screws that you're going to mount it on. It's got just a little bit, quarter inch, half inch, however much you can do is fine. This is excessive, but this is what I'm using for this. Again, this is my little, my little project, so don't worry. So we're going to put it right under here and right under the top. And the way that I do this, to screw any of these down, I'm simply just going to wedge it down with the power of its own weight and some screws. Okay, so this one got just a little cockeyed, but nothing is actually screwed. Well, the drivers are screwed into the board, but uh, those under supports are just wedged on there by the drivers. So that's that's a way to keep uh, machining or anything down. If, if you want to, you can just screw them down. I'm just trying to get to the promised land a little quicker. So anyway, um, after that, we can then mount the control box. Like I said, I've already machined out a spot for the screen to go as well as the potentiometer dimmer. That'll go right up under there um, and be in there. This can be done a few ways. Again, this is how I'm doing it. You could have a separate control box up above that does the dimmers up here, a smaller one, and a smaller one that's just for the display down here. But I'm gonna try to do it all in one here. So have everything in here, and then just the DCs to the LEDs up here. Make it super simple. Um, anyway, back to work. All right, because we're working with such uh, such tight distances here, I ended up breaking um, the two bars into one, so I kept the solid up top, but two smaller bars underneath the drivers down low. Same thing, 
just being held on by uh, by tension from the drivers. Uh, that allowed me to get just a couple couple centimeters, honestly, not even a full inch up in here, and that'll give me just enough length so I can get my control wires down in there and not have to uh, do any funny, funny business inside. But uh, that's the plan right now, so I'm gonna mount this down and then start routing some wires. In here, but we have the control wires routed down as well as the power cables routed down and being the uh, you know quickest way to the promised land that I can think of I'm doing it this project box should be big enough that I don't actually have to cut or modify any of the cable lengths which is always nice um, so last little key bit to this build is we're gonna have to add a power cord and I made sure that I stripped enough on the power cord that I can use it to uh, get the little transformer to measure the uh, power over here so plenty of space here that's the only real secret to this to this build um, or anything using that so let's get that in there Okay, so to drop the, uh, oh, I can't believe it's still recording. Okay, so to drop the screen into it, um, it's honestly probably easier to put the wires on after, but they're in, so just put it in and uh, press it down. There's some pressure clips on the outside. And depending on how snug you made your, made your cut, it will depend on how hard you gotta push it down. Boom, nice. And before I get too far, I might as well just put the potentiometer in as well. Um, potentiometers. Tension armors come with a little nut that's usually back down, and if you don't ever use a fancy knob or anything different, you probably won't even know they're there. But uh, just put it up, it up through. So before we get it all jammed in the box, let's get. Last little bit of power hooked up, as well as the controls, which is just all right. So before I go too far, um, it looks like a mess, and it's kind of what you got to do to get in the box. But we have the two drivers plus the watt meter all in parallel off the main power cable. We have that hot wire being monitored by the magnetic transformer. And then we have the two dimmer cables connected in parallel to one potentiometer, all ready to go into the housing. And once it's in there, use the screws supplied. Okay, now that looks pretty slick. One last thing. Since I have them, put the nice fancy knob on the potentiometer, and we are pretty much good to go. Now this is hooked up um, to measure two drivers, so let me get a load hooked up to these two drivers and we'll show you what's going on. All right, so we have a load hooked up to each driver, so each one of them is essentially powering half of a photo boost or a PLC uh, 640 photo boost system. And as you'll see with these drivers compared to a manual or something, because we can program them, uh, we can get every little bit out of them and they do have a little bit more headroom so you'll see in the system we get plenty of wattage out of it it's a beautiful thing but uh, before we go before we get going as you can see the screen is on powers going and we're in standby mode so there is one watt being consumed because currently each driver consumed a half a watt at standby if we had a 600 watt driver we'd actually save a half a watt so that's kind of a benefit there is what it is um, and then we're also monitoring the system itself so it um see as we take the light off it goes down a little bit uh, it has some power consumption as well so that's all being monitored through here now as you can see we'll click this on you can see the tint of the room changes because we're adding wattage and look at that we get the full blast really quickly and uh, because we can wide open these drivers to everything they're capable of 
check out the wattage. We're actually able to pull over 700 watts at the wall with this system. So, um, and I have measured this. We are getting full current and full voltage. So we're actually getting this output on the DC side. There is some inefficiency in all drivers, but we're getting um, over 650 watts of dissipation to the uh, 660 watts dissipation out the DC side. So pretty fantastic there. And then obviously we can, the whole point of this is that we can dim it and monitor our dimming levels, our power levels all day long, any day. And then also the consume power levels over time. So very, very cool there. Um, and that is really the full abilities of the system. So we now have a driver board, nice, com fairly compact. It's not, I mean, it definitely could be more compact, but overall this was sitting outside your tent. So just outside the tent on a wall, be able to show this. It's a nice way to present it. And then we have the DC lines run into the driver. And then obviously, like I said, the controls to go along with it. Now with the potentiometer, I'm using a 100K ohm potentiometer to power multiple or to dim multiple drivers here. And a 100K, potenti 100K ohm potentiometer will work for all drivers. It's meant for one, but it will work for all. The correct way to size for multiple drivers is 100K ohm divided by the number of drivers. So 100K ohms divided by the number of drivers here is two. 50K ohm potentiometer would be perfect. With that said, 100K ohms has a 50k ohm potentiometer within it. So as long as we get to 50k ohms, anything past that is still 100%, and that's what we're doing here. But anyway, so it'd be two drivers would be 50k ohms, three drivers would be 33k ohms, and you'll probably be better off finding a 35k, a little easier, four drivers, 25k, and regardless, a 100k ohms would work on the same thing. It'll just won't give you the full turn, but it'll work. And being able to monitor it like this let you be able to do those little bit tweaks. But like I said, if you're just doing this from the start, do it right. But as people like me or DIYers like yourself, you might have a lot of stuff laying around. So just know what you can do with it. Anyway, I'm pretty happy with this. This is going to actually go with the photo boost system. It's powering to a buddy. He needs a light real quick. And I just wanted to give him something nice. And I've been wanting to kind of build one of these up. I'm gonna have one for myself in a little single driver situation, but just thought this was a good way to, uh, to send it out, ship it out, and uh, make a nice little tidy system. To add before I go, if you wanted to uh, make an even tidier system on the DC side, make some quick connects. PLC's got some quick connects in, in stock these days. These are hard to find on Amazon, eBay, anywhere other than Alibaba or sourcing them themselves. So you can do that to, uh, to put on the DC side as well, or AC side, wherever you need it. But for this, with the box and having it all in one, it limits us happening to do that. So like I said, happy with the build, stoked on it. Gonna give it to Justin and let him fire away. Also happy with these drivers. Anyway, time for a full new video. So thanks guys, appreciate it. And I'll talk to you later, peace. Okay guys, so if there's one thing that I want you guys to take away from this video, it's basically just the power monitor, um, the abilities of it and the basics of hooking it up. So right here, here it is. And if we flip it over, is really everything we're really gonna need to know. They have a diagram on how to wire it, but it's really only four wires that we're gonna be adding, two of which you can't mess up because they come standard as part of the little uh, magnetic transformer thing that actually measures the power, and it's labeled on which one goes here. It doesn't matter uh, red or black in either terminal, doesn't matter, but on the top two, we have the transformer, so these top ones, I have a red and a black, and these bottom ones, I just have some additional wires that will go out to uh, alternate current power. So alternate current power being from the wall. So very simply here, um, those two AC runs, I have it connected to a little uh, AC plug here, and this transformer is what would measure power. So. If we plug it in real quick, you can see um, gives us a voltage, and that voltage is based on the incoming power, not actually the voltage that's going through the load that it's measuring. Um, so input voltage, uh, the total kilowatts consumed, which is very cool, that's a part of this, we'll be able to track power levels, and then the instanta instantaneous power level being consumed. So right now we're not measuring anything, so it uh, it measures nothing at all, it's saying zero. But 
we now have in front of us what we would call a load or something, um, a power to measure. And so how we're going to be doing that is this transformer, turn the lights off for now, this magnetic transformer is a clamp. Clamps right around in two, it opens up, clamps over. It is designed to go around one AC power line. So in AC you have your live, neutral, and ground. And many a times you don't, like for this instance, you don't have a ground, which is the green wire. But we do have a live, which is the uh, black wire, and a neutral, which is the white. And it will measure power going over either, but I prefer to measure it over the hot or the black. So the as long as you do it over one, it'll measure. But again, I measure the black, and it can only be over one. So again, reading zero on the power right now, we're going to clamp this over one being the hot wire. Notice we got a little bit of power because there is standby power even though this is quote unquote off right now it's in standby mode so there's less than a half a watt being consumed. Now we're going to take it up, turn on it, turn it on excuse me. And I hope you guys can see that but right now we're running at uh, right around 16 watts of power. I hope that shows up on the camera but that's uh, 16 watts of power. We can turn, even turn this down so you can see even better. So 16 watts of power as we dim to full brightness, should be right around uh, 30 watts, I would assume, or 25, 30 watts. So yeah, we got 28 watts of power, and uh, power factor is pretty good at around 0.99 or 99 percent. Hertz is standard for uh, U.S. at 60. Yada yada yada. You get you get the point. So you get all the electrical information on the AC side of it. They do make these for the DC side, um, but for kind of the currents and powers that I like to run, uh, it's easier to find them on the AC. Kind of the nice thing, one of the nicer parts about these um, with the magnetic transformer is it doesn't actually take a load, so it's not um, it's not handling a load. It doesn't have to worry about heating up or, or keeping up with the current voltage that's getting passed through it. It's simply measuring it uh, via magnetic field. So a lot safer than some of the other methods, and they're cheap. So if you're someone who's looking to uh, figure out, how, say, how you want to dim or control a driver, um, this is how. Now the last thing that uh, I need to do that I haven't done yet is, so we are still on, um, this driver is being powered by a line and currently just for demonstrations I have the watt meter being powered by its own little cable here. But that's completely unnecessary so uh, safely we will take those out and uh, just as safely, uh, daisy chain it into the driver line that we already have power coming into. So now um, we are measuring power on the driver but using one power cord to do it because both of these need AC power. Uh, if we really want to get technical about it, um, if we were going to add, say, more drivers to this, because so now we have one driver plus the watt meter connected in parallel, we can add more drivers, which is what I'm going to be doing the rest of this video here. Um, but if we were to add more drivers, we really should take the um, transformer off the single driver load and put it down here on the full AC side. So now, if it's on this side of all the parallel connections, it'll measure as many things as we put into this parallel uh, parallel circuit here. And this is, like I say, currently one driver, but when we move to the Osrams for the rest of this driver or the Meanwells, whatever, however you want to think about it, um, we want to be on this side so we can measure all of the power, not just one driver at a time. And with drivers like Meanwell and such with short little, short little leads coming out their, uh, their AC or their input side, it's a lot easier to just strip more on the power, the power cord side and get a measurement. So anyway, like I said, if there's anything that I want you to take away from this video, it's simply how to use this power meter. Um, guess I should show you it all works. Uh, how to use this power meter and benefit from it. So also, I'm not gonna show you in this video how to basically reset and track your kilowatt hours or your power consumption read the manual for each one because each one's slightly different on the code to push to clear it all. But um, you can track your total power consumption for say a run. So say 
for the last three months this thing has consumed X amount of kilowatt hours and my power company costs you know charges me uh, you know 30 cents a kilowatt if you're in California or something like that 31 36 cents a kilowatt hour Hawaii's 45 the rest of the country is probably like anywhere from 7 to 12 cents it's ridiculous but that way you can calculate how much uh, it's gonna cost you or is costing you to run your lights so like I said for the rest of this video we're gonna be doing my little project here but this you can take away one driver two driver three driver four whatever it may be um, as long as you don't overload your AC circuit on the on the power cord um, you can measure that many that many in parallel and uh, get a good idea that way so links in the description for this back to the rest of it Green jeans, girl.